cry. Oh, no. <laughs> Already. This didn't take us long. How are you? Big question. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. From deep inside a cupboard in my house, underneath a lot of sequins to muffle the noise, I'm Mia Friedman, co-founder of Mamma Mia!, And welcome to a special mini episode of No Filter called How Are You Doing? It's a series where I call up a friend to see how they're doing in this weird time of social distancing. And today I'm calling up Susan Carland. Susan is a several times guest on the No Filter podcast. She's an academic, an author, a feminist and a television presenter and a broadcaster. She lives with her husband, Walid Ali, and their two children in Melbourne. And I wanted to ask her, how are you doing? okay how are you you're asking everyone how they are how are you doing depends what time you ask me Mm. on on what particular day but uh, tell me a little bit where you are who Mm. you're isolating with and what your life looks like at the moment so yeah I'm a bit like you I think we're all oscillating a bit aren't we like Sometimes I'm really good and positive and we can handle this and everything's going to be fine and I'm doing so well Mm -hmm. and everyone's great and we're going to come out of this stronger. And then other times it feels like I'm standing, like we're all standing on the edge of the ocean watching a tidal wave come towards us and there's nothing we can do to stop it and we don't know whose livelihood's going to be washed away, whose lives are going to be washed away. And that's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. And then there are other times I just feel frustrated and annoyed by it. And, you know, I go, I cycle through that about 50 times a day is, is how I'm going. So I'm at home with, it's funny, I'm at home with my husband and kids, but both my husband, Waleed, and I are both still working. So Waleed still has to go to work because he works in news and that's considered an essential service. So he goes to that every day, although some things have changed. He has to do his own makeup now. Uh, and I'm still working full time because I'm an academic and uni classes are still happening, but we just have to move everything online. And my kids are at home because it's school holidays and I'm sure that'll extend, you know, probably term two, they'll all be home. So in some ways, nothing's changed because my husband and I are still working, but in other ways, everything's changed. And I feel like I'm saying to my kids many times a day, I have to go on a Zoom call now. And unless you burst into flames, I don't want to see you. And <laughs> um, so it's, you know, it's, it's a lot. How old are your kids now? They're both in high school. So they're big. So that doesn't make it easier. Like it makes a huge difference, you know, mm. for parents at home with toddlers or even primary school age kids. That's hard. That would just be so difficult. So my kids are pretty self-sufficient and independent. Um, But like I said, it's school holidays, so they're just chilling. When term goes back and they inevitably have to start learning online, I don't know, that that could be quite different. So it's funny you say that because Victoria obviously went earlier. We're in New South Wales at the moment and um, we're not on school holidays. So I'm actually dreading school holidays because at least during school, having said this, my kids are – 11 and 14, so high school and year six, they have some structure and they have things to do all day. What Mm. I don't know is going to happen is when it's school holidays and they can't see their friends, they can't leave the house. So I'm kind of dreading that. Yeah. House party is getting a real workout with our kids at the moment, chatting with their friends, which is good. I think that helps a lot. Have you downloaded Um, house party? I'm starting to look at the right, you know, I've tried Zoom, I've tried Google Hangouts. Explain house party for those people who aren't on it yet. Well, don't look, I don't kids. really know myself. You need to know I'm a house party tragic. I have a grand total of two people in my friends list, one of whom is my husband who I live with. So <laughs> I'm not very popular. I'm not being invited to many house parties. I see my kids use a lot and it seems to be the reason you'd want house party as opposed to chatting on Zoom, for example, is you can have lots of people, which you can with Zoom, but they're a game. So when my kids are chatting to their friends, instead of just like, oh, what are you doing? I don't know. What are you doing? Um, there's games that are automatically built into it. So I hear them doing trivia with each other and like Pictionary. Oh. Um, yeah. So it's like they are playing together, which is, that's, that's the appeal of house party. I like that. That's interactive. I want to ask you a little bit more about your logistics. So are you socially isolating or is that not possible because Waleed has to leave the house to go to Channel 10 every day? Yeah. So in that sense, that's, that's kind of weird. I mean, we're still leaving the house to, like I go for a walk and that kind of thing, or I go to the supermarket, but other than that, like everyone in Victoria, we're not, do, no one can do anything else. Um, so I suppose we're all kind of under an enforced social isolation. So we're not seeing any other people, you know, the guy at the petrol station, that kind of thing is about, that's about it. And I was surprised that, that life is going on 
as normal on TV. Um, I've got friends that work at the ABC and of course, Waleed and Carrie at the project. What, how is life going on as normal? I, I've heard that everyone's doing their own makeup and hair now pretty much and putting on their own audio. So no more anyone touching you to attach a microphone, which used to happen. Yeah, so well, he's very proud of himself. He came home and said, "I've got three makeup brushes," and it's it's quite a four step process, and he's he's really into it. Um, so I know there are some things have changed. So like a production meeting, which they all used to have at about 11 o'clock, they'd go in for now. Wally calls in for that. A lot of the producers are now on a totally separate floor, isolated from the presenters. And also now, if you watch the project, like it's all spread out. So it used to be that four of them were squashed onto the desk. Mm. Now there's three of them. One of them's on a, and then the fourth is on a screen. So there's the, they are having that social distancing. But, you know, I don't know how long, that will continue. If someone on the show gets it, Mm. I don't know what that will mean. Yeah, it's funny. Rachel Corbett, who does the project, usually flies down and does every Thursday night, either on her flight down or on her flight back, she was told that there was someone who had COVID. And so she had to go into two weeks quarantine. She has flatmates and she had to stay in her room essentially for two weeks. I think that two weeks is finished and, and she's clear. But Yeah, it just feels like the ground beneath our feet is suddenly quite shaky, doesn't it? Does it make you feel like physically vulnerable having him leaving the family unit and coming in? To be honest, it's funny. Like in that way, I guess it's kind of like, well, it is what it is. So it's him sort of going and coming. But I think, and he's very particular, like he's very, very particular about washing his hands and not touching anyone. I think the person I'm probably most concerned about is my mum. My mum has, um, she has stage four cancer. She has stage four terminal cancer. She's a widow and she lives alone and she lives two hours from me. And this is probably the last year of her life. And I think, I know it's hard. I think the thing that I find the hardest is since this has started is I realised I may have hugged her for the last time and not known it. If this is the last year of her life, which it could be, she had all these plans of things she wanted to do and now she's stuck at home. So I struggle a lot with that. I cry a lot about that. But I don't know what, like, what can I do? I FaceTime her a lot. I've taught her Zoom. You know, we, we do all that sort of stuff. But, mm. yeah. Maybe she could That's be really your friend hard. on House Party. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she Increase could... my House Party numbers by 33%. That's right. Head you <laughs> towards tr- uh, double digits. I've just joined. So as soon as I work out how to use it and how to find you, I'll be happily friend number four. Oh, thanks. I would really appreciate that. <laughs> um, what are you doing? Are you finding that you are creating a new routine at home? Um, and how are you doing that? Yeah. So it's funny. This year I had really started the year with a very clear map of how I wanted things to go professionally. I'd got a fellowship to take me overseas for a couple of years to do research and I'd set everything up. It was going to be this two months overseas researching. I was then going to publish from that, which would then get everything set up for next year. Like I had a really clear, exciting plan. And now with all of this, I have all this like work adrenaline that has nowhere to go. You know, like when you start a race and you're all ready to go Mm. and it's got to go somewhere and now I don't know what to do with it. So I'm trying to keep myself busy. That seems to work well for me. I know that if I don't, I'll just spend hours scrolling on my phone and I'll just come out of this like a zombie. So I've enrolled in this Yale online course on political philosophy. Mm. I'm reading a lot. I'm exercising heaps just to try to channel it I don't I'm not someone that works well where like every day at nine o'clock I do this and every day at 10 o'clock I do that instead I have a list of things this is what I want to do every day and then I just do it whenever but I need to have a lot of things I'm doing and like I'm you know I'm doing 20,000 steps a day because I'm just where I'm trying to I'm trying to send it somewhere how are you exercising well that's actually something like you know how we've all I think everyone's sort of got the big like honourable things we're sad about in COVID, like, you know, me with my mum or people who've lost their job or whatever, and that's and that's noble. And then I think we've all kind of got the kind of crappy or selfish or shameful things we're upset about. And I'm really upset about my gym closing. <laughs> like I'm really, like I found that really hard um, because I use exercise a lot for stress release. Um, and so now I go on a lot of stupid runs, but I hate running. And so I feel cranky about it, but it helps. And it's good to get outside and so I do a lot of that um I, only one a day obviously I'm trying to do the right thing um and so I might go out for an hour or something 
But I also find that helps me sleep well at night. And I think if I don't do that, then my mind is just whirring too much. And it's often at that time of night, your brain goes to the, mm. the places you don't want it to go. What kind of thing did you used to do at the gym? Were you one of the uh, two or three Australians who did bar classes? <laughs> Uh, no, I did a lot of weight stuff, which is really annoying because, like, I can't do that at home. I don't have anything. We don't have a home gym. Mm. So, yeah, there was no way to transfer it, which is, yeah, I find that frustrating. But, you know, it is what it is. And like I said, it's, it's a self-indulgent thing to be to be whining about, I know. But I think we've all got that. Yeah, I think it's the, the combination of the big losses and the small losses. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I see that with my kids as well. Like, you know, yesterday my one of my kids just got really upset, like just nothing was going the way they wanted. And so, you know, I say to him, well, let's think about, you know, what makes you feel better. Let's chat to your friends on house party. How about you and I go for a walk? And as I'm saying that to him, I'm like, yeah, this is what I need to be doing as well. I need to be talking to my friends online and I need to be getting outside and, you know, just mm. all those obvious things. We know we should be doing, but I don't know, we can sink a bit, I think. I was talking to our mutual friend, Julia Baird, this week for an episode of No Filter that's coming up and we were talking about faith and how Mm. faith has got, she's a very deep faith and um, how that has got her through a lot of dark times, particularly when she was diagnosed with cancer. Are you finding that faith plays a particular role for you during this time of uncertainty? Is it something to cling to? Yeah, I think it definitely provides maybe an anchoring or a bit of perspective, um, a calm, a sense of order in the chaos. It's interesting, Ramadan's coming up soon um, in a month, which in some ways always for me kind of feels like a bit of a spiritual withdrawing inwards and a quiet sort of going in that spiritual cave. But that's, it's really upset my kids because for them, they see Ramadan as a time where we go out a lot and we eat with friends at night and family. And so, you know, my son started crying when he realized that wasn't going to happen. So today I was like, how can I try to, how can I try to make Ramadan special? We can't go to the mosque to pray together anymore, all this sort of stuff. It's difficult, um, you know, for, and I, I, from what I understand in the Jewish faith as well, a lot of our, our traditions were communal. Mm. You know, we eat meals together and it's about being together as a people. So all of these things have to be rethought, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, I think, to just to rethink um, what we're doing and, and why. But it does, it is going to be a, a you know, a reconfiguring, I guess. You and I have talked a few times about some of the similarities between um, Islam and the Jewish faith. And there's a a big Jewish festival holiday coming up as well called Passover um, that is one of the most sacred sort of festivals of the year. And that is also very much around getting together um, with family and eating. (laughs) And we've, in our family, been talking about what do we do? Do we do it via Zoom? Maybe I try to get all the relatives on house party. God help me. (laughs) (laughs) But (laughs) the last time, um, I remember the last time I came to your house was during Ramadan and we had, Mm. um, I helpfully brought a bottle of wine. (laughs) 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 You were very kind and were lead and didn't shame me. And we had a, a beautiful meal together. Do you think it's going to be harder not eating, fasting during the day when you're at home or it will make no difference? I think it could because, you know, when you're out and about and busy with work, sometimes it can be really distracting. So I do wonder if I will be watching the clock more, which, um, mm. yeah, that, that could be that could be a challenge. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good thing. I actually have no idea. And I think that's so much of how I'm feeling about this all this in general is I actually can't think more than a day ahead. Yes. Because when it's, when it's such a big unknown thing, the further I look ahead, the more it's just stepping into a void. So I just look, what's the next day? I deal with that. And, and that's about as far ahead as I can look. I think that's so true. Okay, so what are you doing to distract yourself, bring yourself joy besides going for runs, mm. which don't seem like they're bringing you a lot of joy, but they're doing a job. What's bringing yeah, you joy? I hate them. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a lot of reading, which does bring me joy. I love reading. It feels like swimming when I read. It just feels so immersive. So mm. I'm doing heaps of reading, which is really nice. I'm doing that Yale course on political philosophy, which I'm actually really enjoying. Um, one thing, you know. Um, are I'm you reading any sport. normal books or are they all academic books? So is anything you can no, recommend? A lot of fiction, but to be honest, you probably would have read it all. Like I'm reading, I just finished um, Such a Fun Age, which I'm sure you read already. So good. 
Yeah, that was really good. Mm. Um, but I ended up reading some ones. They sound academic, but they're not. There's one about the Stoic philosophers. I know it sounds boring. It's actually quite good. Just trust me on that. Um, I am listening to uh, obviously the, you know the, all the regular podcasts, many of yours naturally. But there's one. There's a Happiness Lab by it's it's a podcast called the Happiness Lab. It's um, run by a woman who works out of Yale. And she's done a, a series on COVID, which are actually really good, just simple strategies on dealing with COVID from a, a, a psychological happiness point of view. Oh. That'd be good. Any, t- any tips that she had that you can share? What were some of the obvious ones? There was one, <laughs> one she gave a good one for kids, and this is particularly when you're trying to get kids to, if, they're, if they need to do their online schooling or whatever, is say to little kids, they found that saying to them, how would Batman act in this situation? Oh. Or any superhero they like because when they externalise this person that I would want to be like who's always cool and calm and in control and always does the right thing, how would Batman be now? Well, Batman would do blah and then I'm going to copy that. So maybe we could all try to be Batman as well. That was a good one. I've mm. tried that on my son. didn't work. <laughs> um, what else? I'm watching this thing on Formula One with my husband on um, Netflix. I don't like Formula One at all, but it's just anything that is completely removed from COVID that just doesn't have the, the mismattering of virus or disease or pandemic or end of the world is such a bomb. Like it's anything that just takes me out of that constant thing from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep. I, and it's all anyone's talking about. Have mm. you noticed that? It's anyone's talking about which gets quite boring, doesn't it? It's funny. Um, we looked we looked at doing an episode of Mamma Mia Out Loud with no COVID stories in it and we couldn't find anything else to talk about. Right. It's like there's no other news in the world. There's nothing. Every night when my husband comes home from work, I'm like, tell us the non-COVID thing you did on the show tonight. He's like, there is literally nothing. Mm. There's nothing. Nothing to talk about. And also, I guess, because it affects everything. It's not just about health and people dying. It's the economy and, you know, anyway. That's but that. Esca- and things- escapism is good. What's the name of that yeah. Formula One series? Something with cars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really selling it. I think it's called Drive to Survive. But as yes. someone who could not be less interested in cars, it's really good, really, really addictive. And each episode is only about 30 minutes, so it's it's a real bite size. You don't have to know anything about Formula One to get into it. So I really enjoy it. And you know what else is I found has really helped me, sort of get me out of my own head, is I'm, I try to do something nice for other people regularly. So, like, I wrote a little note and put it in all our neighbours' letterbox saying, you know, if you're stuck at home or you need groceries, here's my phone number, send me a text. And I felt like a real dick doing it, I have to say, because I didn't know if they'd read it and be like, you know, get stuff, loser. But everyone was actually really nice and I got to meet lots of our new neighbours. They texted me, so that made me feel better. I left some mm. toilet paper out the front in case people want to take it. Doing stuff like that helps me immeasurably. And I don't know if it's because it makes me feel like I'm back in control of something or if it's just getting out of my own self and my own self-pity. I don't know what it is, but doing that has probably been the most helpful thing for me. I reckon it's both of those things. I think it's feeling like you're in control because if you've got enough to share and you've got mm-hmm. the ability to help others, then you must be doing okay. And also yeah. it does just take you out of yourself. Yeah, ruminating on my own sad story, which is, you know, it's never good. Any, uh, just finally, any good uh, isolation snacks that you've been getting into? Oh, that is a good one. Um, I wonder if anyone else is doing this thing where now – like we're in isolation, so it's it's we're allowed to do the things that we wouldn't have normally allowed ourselves to do. So like now, in the past, I wouldn't have eaten that packet of Tim Tams, but now I will because for God's sake, I'm in isolation. Give me something. Yeah. And I've been really trying to cut down on my coffee. I used to be about six or more a day. I was I am down to three, but I can feel the voice in my head starting to be like, we deserve to be back to four. Like how <laughs> much more can I possibly put up with? Life is bad enough. So I wonder if everyone's sort of got that little thing where we we feel like we've justified that. For me, it's coffee. I always think about you and coffee and I was going to ask about that because I remember during Ramadan, you have to get up at like four in the morning <laughs> and have six coffees just to load yourself up so that you don't get a splitting headache by 11 o'clock in the morning. I've never oh forgotten God. that. I was going to say, how's the coffee going? Yeah, it's horrendous. How about you and tea? I remember you were similar with your tea. I am the same and I I comfort drink tea. Like tea for me is just, I just, 
ex- I'm existing on tea because also when I get anxious, sometimes my stomach gets in knots and I lose my appetite for a bit and then I'll just only be able to have tea, but then my appetite will come roaring back and I'll be starving. Mm. So, you know, I'm eating a lot of ice cream with um, Milo. <laughs> <laughs> Great one. Yeah, I haven't I, done that since I was a kid. Well, that's right. I think we're all regressing, right? Like I'm really regressing. Yeah. Even what I want to eat is regressing. That is a really good point. I reckon there is something in that psychologically about us regressing. Yes, there's yeah. something in that. Well, next time I speak to you, we'll probably be like about four years old. Um, <laughs> much love, my beautiful friend. Love to Walid and the kids. And um, I'll see you on the other that. side. We need a big street party after this. Yeah, that's right. I'll also add you on house party or add me or however Please, the young people I'm are doing it. Magically unfriended. I'll Just end up talking sake. to your mum and she and I can be like mates on house party. <laughs> I love you. You too. Bye, Mia. After we finished that interview, Susan and I were talking a little bit more about how this idea of the little losses are also relevant as well as the big ones and she said a saying that she's been reminding herself of that an unmet need doesn't go away and so sometimes just by being able to say hey I'm really disappointed about missing this birthday party or not being able to go to the gym or whatever it's not like we're trying to compete with the people who've lost their jobs or who have lost loved ones but she says somehow saying it sometimes can just help you kind of let it go. So wherever you are right now and however you're feeling, whether you're socially isolating or still out as an essential service provider, please know that I am thinking of you and sending my love. And if you're struggling and need some more support, we have made the first week of our online anxiety support course available to all No Filter listeners. Just follow the link in the show notes. Please stay safe and take care.